Hello. <clears throat> Are you ready for some more stories? Okay. Do you have a snack? Or drink? Some of the snack on or have a drink while you're listening, reading along with me? Um, today, we're going to read another Little Red Riding Hood story. Yep. Yesterday, we read The Little Red Cowboy. I'm sorry, Little Red Cowboy Hat. And that one was in the, where was it, where was the setting? Kind of a hint on the front where there's cactuses and it's a lot of dirt, rattlesnakes. Yeah, this one was in the desert. And so probably out in the west somewhere, southwest, where there's a lot of deserts and um, kind of where we live where I live. If you don't live where I live, then probably different than you, but I know there's a big group of students listening to this that live in the desert with me, so that was kind of the same setting as we live in, so we're very familiar with that one. This one, maybe not so much. This one is called Lone Popo. It's by Ed Young, and it has just his name there, so we know he's the author who drew the pictures. He probably drew the pictures as well, because when you have an author and an illustrated illustrator listed, it's two different people. But when they just list one name, that means he did the whole thing. The book, the pictures, and everything. And these pictures are really good. So he did a good job with the story and with the illustrations. This story is a Red Riding Hood story from China. So we're going to read this, and we're going to think about that traditional story that we know. And we're going to also think about maybe Little Red from yesterday, the Little Red Cowboy Hat. And com kind of compare and see how this story is different than those stories that we already read. Okay? So let's, uh, let's see if there's any end pages. Nope, this one's pretty, pretty plain. Just opens right up to the title page. Lone Popo. A Red Riding Hood Story from China, translated and illustrated by Ed Young. So translated means that this is a, a well-known story in China, and he's retelling it for us. So he didn't make this up, he's retelling it for us. All right. And the book is dedicated, meaning there's a really kind of, can you see the wolf there? There's a, you can see the picture of the wolf. But then you can also kind of see the picture of a man or a human on the side. And it says, To all the wolves of the world for lending their good name as a tangible symbol for our darkness. So in stories, sometimes the bad guy is always portrayed as a wolf. And so he, this author is thanking wolves for, you know, thank you for letting us portray our dark side with you. All right. See, I told you the illustrations were amazing, right? Those. I think he probably did them with maybe watercolor or something like that. <clears throat> okay. Once long ago, there was a woman who lived alone in the country with her three children, Shang, Tao, and... I'm not going to know how to say this word. Her three children, Shang, Tao, and Peots. That's how I'm going to say it. And if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. That's how I think it's said. On the day of their grandmother's birthday, the good mother set off to see her, leaving her three children at home. So this says the setting is in the country. So they don't live in a city. They don't live um, on a ranch. They live out in the country, so it looks like they're pretty isolated out there, right? And their mother is leaving to see their grandmother. Is that the same as the stories we've read? Or different? Yeah, that's different. Usually Little Red goes somewhere, so let's see. Before she left, she said, Be good while I am away, my heart-loving children. I will not return tonight. Remember to close the door tight at sunset and latch it well. Okay, so the kids are going to be home all alone. Ah, I feel like that skipped a page, but it didn't. Hmm. A 
Okay. But an old wolf lived nearby, and he saw the good mother leave. At dusk, disguised as an old woman, he came up to the house of the children and knocked on the door twice. Shang, who was the eldest, said through the latch door, Who is it? My little jewels, said the wolf. This is your grandmother, your popo. That's what popo means, grandmother. Popo, Shang said. Our mother has gone to visit you. The wolf acted surprised. To visit me? I have not met her along the way. She must have taken a different route. Popo, Shang said. How is it that you come so late? The wolf answered, The journey is long, my children, and the day is short. Pretty scary picture of the wolf, right? All right. Shang listened through the door. Popo, why is your voice so low? Your grandmother, <clears throat> your grandmother has caught a cold, good children, and it is dark and windy out here. Quickly, open up and let your popo come in," said the cunning wolf. "Said, Tayam Pouts could not wait. One unlatched the door and the other opened it. They shouted, "Popo, popo, come in!" At that moment, he entered the door. The wolf blew out the candle. Popo, Shang asked, why did you blow out the candle? The room is so dark. The wolf did not answer. Tao and Pout, 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 Pouts? Pouts. I'm just going to say Pouts. Tao and Pouts rushed to their Popo and wished to be hugged. The old wolf had Tao, held Tao. Good child, you are so plump. He embraced Pouts. Good child, you have grown to be so sweet. Soon the old wolf pretended to be sleepy. He yawned. All the chicks in the coop, he said. Popo is sleepy too. When he climbed into the big bed, Pouts climbed in at one end with the wolf, and Shang and Tao climbed into the other. But when Shang stretched, she touched the wolf's tail. Popo, your foot has a bush on it. You think they're going to start figuring it out? Probably not Popo. Ooh, Popo looks, the wolf looks worried. Popo has brought hemp strings to weave you a basket. The wolf said, Shang touched grandmother's sharp claws. Popo, your hand has thorns on it. Popo has brought you an, an owl to make shoes for you, the wolf said. An owl. Owl. A-W-L. That must be something that you make shoes on in China. At once, Shang lit the light and the wolf blew it out again. But Shang had seen the wolf's hairy face. Figuring it out. Popo, she said, for she was not only the eldest, she was also the most clever. You must be hungry. Have you eaten ginkgo nuts? What is ginkgo? The wolf asked. Ginkgo is soft and tender like the skin of a baby. One taste and you will live forever. Shang said. And the nuts grow on the top of the tree just outside the door. The wolf gave a big sigh. Oh dear. Popo is old. Her bones have become brittle. No longer can she climb trees. Oh, good Popo, we can pick some for you, Shang said. The wolf was delighted. Shang jumped out of bed and Tao and Pouts came with her to the ginkgo tree. There, Shang told her sisters about the wolf and all three climbed up to the top of the tall tree. The wolf waited and waited. Plump Tao did not come back. Sweet Pouts did not come back. Shang did not come back, and no one brought any nuts from the ginkgo tree. At last the wolf shouted, Where are you, children? Popo, Shang called out. 
We are at the top of the tree eating ginkgo nuts. Good children, the wolf begged. Pluck some for me. But Popo, ginkgo is magic only when it is plucked directly from the tree. You must come and pluck it from the tree yourself. I'm trying to trick the I'm trying to trick the wolf, I think. The wolf came outside and paced back and forth under the tree where he heard the three children eating the ginkgo nuts at the top. Oh, Popo, these are so tasty. The skin is so tender. Shang said, the wolf's began the wolf's mouth began to water. Finally, Shang, the eldest and the most clever child, said, Popo, I have a plan. At the door, there is a big basket. Behind it is a rope. Tie the rope to the basket. Sit in the basket and throw the other end to me. I will pull you up. Get him into the basket. Oh, my. The wolf was overjoyed and fetched the basket and the rope. Then he threw one end of the rope to the top of the tree. Shang caught the rope and began to pull the basket up, up, up. Halfway up, she let go of the rope, and the basket and the wolf fell to the ground. I am so small and weak, Popo, Shang pretended. I could not hold on to the rope alone. This time I will help, Tao said. Let's do it again. She gonna do it? Key. The wolf had only one thought in his mind to taste a ginkgo nut. He climbed into the basket again. Now Shang and Tao, Tao pulled the rope on the basket together, higher and higher. Again they let go, and again the wolf tumbled down and bumped his head. The wolf was furious. He growled and he cursed. He could not hold the ro we could not hold the rope, Popo, Shang said, but only one ginkgo nut and you will be well again. I shall give a hand to my sisters this time, pouts, the youngest said. This time we shall not fail. Okay, they're going to all work together now, all three of them. Now the children pulled the rope with all of their strength. As they pulled, they sang, hey, yo, hey, yo, and the basket rose straight up, higher than the first time, higher than the second time, higher and higher and higher, until it nearly reached the top of the tree. When the wolf reached out, he could almost touch the highest branch. But at that moment, Shang coughed, and they all let go of the rope, and the basket fell down and down and down. Not only did the wolf bump his head, but he broke his heart to pieces. Hmm. Popo, Shang shouted, but there was no answer. Popo, Tao shouted, but there was no answer. Popo, Pouts shouted, there was still no answer. The children climbed to the branches just above the wolf and saw that he was truly dead. Then they climbed down, went into the house, closed the door, locked the door with the latch, and fell peacefully asleep. On the next day, their mother returned with baskets of food from their real popo. And the three sisters told her the story of the popo who had come. The end. So, this lone popo, um, how was that different than our traditional, in our the one that we're used to? Doesn't mean that it's it's our tradition. This is the traditional story in China. So, how is that different from the story that we just read? I mean, from the story that we usually read. The mother left. Instead of, instead of it being Little Red Riding Hood, it was the mother left to go see the grandmother, and the wolf came to their house. That's very different, right? Did they need someone to save them? Did they have a woodcutter? Or did their grandma come save them, like in Little Red Cowboy Hat? 
No, they saved themselves. They were they were clever and they used their heads to trick the wolf into going up into the tree. And they really tricked him by making him think that he was going to get something that was even better than the children as a snack. He was going to get something that made him live forever. So he was determined to follow through. So so just a couple of the ways that we have differences between stories. Sometimes the story can be a little bit different. Sometimes the characters can be a little bit different. Almost always we have a different setting. So this was in the desert and this was in the country, a much different setting. So it's a lot of different ways to read stories and think about how they're different and think about how they're the same. And I think tomorrow we'll read a really different story. So we read Little Red Cowboy Hat and Lone Popo. And tomorrow, I think, we will read... Hmm, it's hard for me to decide. Little Red Riding Hood. So this one, we'll have to find out why this one's different than our traditional story. All right? Meet me back here tomorrow, and we'll read some more. Bye-bye.